What's up everybody, D-Man back. Welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be doing a deep dive into Neon Genesis Evangelion. What does loneliness sound like? We know what sadness sounds like, a somber set of strings or a quiet reverberant piano. We know what fear sounds like, a harsh orchestral strike or a sudden loud noise. We know what joy sounds like, a harmonic melody, a proud symphony. But what about loneliness? What does that sound like? We may know what it looks like, we may even know what it feels like, but to put loneliness into a sound is a much harder task. This is exactly the challenge that was faced by the team working on Neon Genesis Evangelion back in 1995, when they released one of the most overlooked episodes of the series, Episode 4, Rain After the Escape or Rain and After Running Away, but better known as The Hedgehog's Dilemma. Hideaki Anno uses Evangelion as a method of exploring the twists and turns of navigating life with depression under constant stress and pressure while disguising it as an elaborate story about humanity fighting against divine forces who wish to cause our extinction. Episode 4, written by Akio Satsukawa and directed by Sushi Kaga, strips away most of the external layers the show has built up and dives into the show's core. Ironically, by deviating from the main plot of the show, Evangelion is finally able to get to the point. But this deviation created an interesting challenge for sound designer Hideyuki Tanaka. How does one create the sound of loneliness? This episode centers around Shinji's quest for purpose after suffering the ultimate rejection. His journey takes him out of his element and places him entirely on his own with no one but him to guide his story. The animation is often very limited in this episode as well, with lots of moments of growth occurring entirely within the sound design alone. The episode opens with the sound of rain. Rain has long since had a connotation of sadness, coldness, and is associated with depression or loss. Tanaka leaves us with nothing but the reality of the world the characters are living in. In fact, this episode might be the only episode of the entire show to feature only diegetic noise. We hear the full process of Misato getting ready in the morning, all while the ever-present backdrop of rain beats away. Once we are fully immersed into Misato's reality, a curveball is thrown our way. Shinji is gone. As Misato realizes Shinji is missing, a siren is heard. This siren fits within the world of Evangelion. It's just an emergency vehicle driving around outside, but we never see the source, nor do we follow up on it. This sound was specifically placed for the viewers to experience Misato's distress. As she realizes Shinji is missing, a siren is heard. It's a universal sign for danger. The storm continues to rage on through the entire sequence, even when Misato is pretending everything's alright. Although she puts on a smile for Shinji's classmates, the storm lets us know everything is not not all right. Behind her act is underlying concern. This is bad news, and Misato knows it. We are introduced to Shinji through the sound of a train. Before the train or Shinji are even on screen, we can already hear it chugging around. In the greater picture, the train in Evangelion symbolizes Shinji's journey through depression. He rides it all day and allows it to take him from place to place, but he never gets off. And in the end, the train will always return him to right back where he started. Nothing ever changes. In the context of this episode, the train takes on the additional symbol for Shinji's loneliness. There are people on this train with Shinji, but they appear to be in a different world than him. He can't hear, or at least doesn't interact with them, and he remains stationary while everyone else is free to mingle and leave when needed. Shinji is trapped in a world of sadness and loneliness. The world has placed massive demands on him and has the highest of expectations. He's trapped, and as the montage continues, it becomes clear he's the only one who's trapped. The idea that Shinji is trapped on the train is echoed in the sound the train makes. The chugging of the vehicle is repetitive and constant. It never lets up and continues to cycle. And although there are people around Shinji, we never hear them. 
them. The only outside sound we hear comes from the train itself. It's as if those people were never on with Shinji in the first place. The only voice we can hear is the announcer, who is nothing more than part of the train. He's a disembodied voice that can offer no connection or companionship. His speech is filtered through old speakers. Those around Shinji are talking. They aren't standing in silence, but they can't be heard. They may be occupying the same physical location as Shinji, but he is not present with them. Shinji's music serves as the only other source of sound during this scene. We can hear him pressing the buttons on his device clearer than we can hear anything else. The sound is coming from Shinji, not the outside world, adding to his isolation. The only things he can hear are the things directly affecting him and him alone, and we can hear Shinji's music with him. The use of music here is diegetic and allows Shinji to block off all the other characters from himself. The SDAP functions as a symbol for Shinji's withdrawal from reality. He has locked off the real world and barriered himself off from outside contact with the help of his device. He escapes to a world of fantasy because he's too afraid of the rejection he could face if he opens up to the real world. A harsh transition hits as the sound of the train increases and consumes Shinji. At the same time this happens, the screen cuts to black, forcing an abrupt stop to the action, or lack thereof. All sounds cut with the screen, leaving us in near silence, with the exception of Shinji's SDAT. We can still hear him tampering with it, showing that even though the physical train has stopped, he isn't ready to open up to the world yet. Shinji is forced off the train and walks around the streets with his headphones in. The world is loud and overwhelming, but Shinji sleepwalks through it. He doesn't allow himself to be overwhelmed by the sounds of the real world. They are too warm and normal. The sounds of people talking represent contact between humans, the exact thing he's afraid of. It is for this reason that Shinji continues to navigate the world with his headphones in. He continues to block off the sound of the outside world from getting into him. It's as if the sounds themselves are what he's afraid of. And so, Shinji he continues to walk around the world without paying attention to any of those around him. Additionally, Shinji navigates the world without ever being noticed. No one ever acknowledges him, and during his whole journey, no one in the city ever pays attention to him or tries to open up to him. Shinji visits a nearly empty movie theater. He sits in a row of seats which should be populated, but he's all alone. We begin by hearing the sounds of the movie, but something soon catches Shinji's eye and also distracts the sound design from the film. A couple. They are sitting in front of Shinji making out. Although Shinji realistically wouldn't be able to hear the couple over the movie, he still does. We still do. We can hear them loud and clear. The sound of the couple draws the audience to them the same way Shinji is drawn to the sight of them. They distract from the movie, and the noises they make while kissing cut deep into Shinji's longing for human contact and affection. As Shinji sleeps, another train is heard, showing that he can't even escape the train in his dreams. Even when he's not on it, he's still on it. His dream is introduced through some ominous bird chirping that immediately puts the audience on edge. Things are far from all right. The sound of cicadas rise up and consume Shinji. Then, a ghostly howl is heard, which distorts Shinji's reality, causing him to panic. Even without the psychedelic visuals, the sound still conveys the pressure and fear Shinji feels. The sound builds up and bombards Shinji all at once, overwhelming him until all he can do is... <laughs> run away. All the sound is cut abruptly as Shinji takes off running. We can only hear the sound he makes now. He has, again, retracted from the world he found himself in until all that was left was himself. The soundscape of this dream gives us all we need to know about Shinji's mental and emotional state going into this episode. He is scared and overwhelmed. Everything builds up around him and terrifies him. He is forced to revert inward and run away. He runs away from his problems and retracts from the world, leaving only himself. Then, once he's finished doing that, he even tries to run away from himself. More sirens ring out as Misato is reassured that Shinji is still missing. Her problems have not gone away. Meanwhile, Shinji explores the world on his own, completely alone. We only hear ambient sounds and the occasional sounds of Shinji moving. The sounds and visuals juxtapose with Shinji's feelings. The world is bright and happy. The soundscape is equally as cheerful with birds singing and a soft breeze blowing, but still Shinji is feeling so alone. The cut to the mountaintop is signaled with harsh winds. These winds represent Shinji's inner turmoil. He is conflicted with lots of different emotions brewing. Shinji is left all alone on the edge of collapse. Visually, this is reflected with Shinji literally sitting on the edge of a cliff with nothing but the churning wins within him. Before Misato is even on screen again, her dialogue begins. As we see Shinji on the edge of a cliff, Misato reminds us of how he wound up here in the first place. Her voice comes in so we still have a visual representation of Shinji's current state while she discusses him, and also so that we can smoothly transition from Shinji to her. Shinji is a 14-year-old boy with the pressure of the entire human race on his shoulders. The entire world is counting on him to save the day. His mother is dead and his father hates him. He feels he has no self-worth and he's just suffered an emotional 
defeat at the hands of Misato, his caregiver, who lashed out at him and told him he's expendable. This is the basis for Shinji's current loneliness. When we flash back to Misato's conversation with Shinji, we lose all room tone. We don't hear much of anything but the character's dialogue. Even if we wanted to, we have no choice but to focus on Misato's words. There's even a slight touch of reverberation to her words, allowing them to bounce around the room and Shinji's head a little more. We are forced to listen to her lash out at him in a way that literally resonates within the scene. We now understand why Shinji is so upset in this episode. The soundscape takes on a whole new tone as we meet up with Kensuke. Kensuke is one of the few characters in Evangelion who isn't dealing with a massive amount of inner turmoil and emotional issues. The sounds become much lighter and livelier. They aren't used for irony or juxtaposition like when the soundscape seemed cheerful with Shinji earlier. Kensuke is actively exploring his world and participating in it. He's happy and genuinely having fun. This is reflected in a louder and fuller sound design. Kensuke's voice isn't sad or cold either. The frogs in the background aren't scary or somber. The sound of him tumbling around the grass is rich. The ambience of the mountains is peaceful, as is the overall feel for the scene. That night, a much more friendly set of crickets chirp away. Kensuke even notes that they are much nicer to listen to than the cicadas from earlier. The crickets are a little loud, but the characters mention how that's part of nature repairing itself. The sound of the crickets is a reminder of life on a planet constantly facing death. The sound of the campfire is warm and friendly. Kensuke is the first friendly figure Shinji has come into contact with so far in the episode and the first character he has a positive interaction with. <gasps> This is all stripped away as Shinji is apprehended by nerve agents. The footsteps of the agents are ominous and build up as they approach the kid's tent. They come tearing their way into Shinji's world just as he found an escape. The sound cuts again, forcing us to only focus on the soldier's words as they confront Shinji. Shinji is returned to his holding room at Nerve HQ and confronted by Misato again. The sound again is reduced. The only thing we hear is the character's dialogue and the metal reverberation the room provides it. The lack of room tone or ambience and the metallic reverberation make the counter feel cold, disconnected, and upsetting. The unfriendly cicadas return as Shinji heads to the train station after being kicked out of nerve. As Shinji makes up with his friends, the sound of music comes over the train station speakers. The sound is much more friendly and shows that being with friends is more comforting and rewarding than being alone. The music cuts off again as Shinji is taken away from his friends. The sounds of the train come back in. The train is heard chugging along, as is the screeching of its brakes. The brakes make the train seem frightening and reveal how dangerous it would be for Shinji to get back on. The announcer's voices here come across as more intimidating than they did before. Just as the door opens and Shinji is free to board his never-ending journey through a lonely world again, all sound is cut. Shinji hears the voice of Misato encouraging him. Although she isn't there with him, he remembers what it sounds like, and for a moment, it's like she is. Her voice is warm and inviting. It reminds Shinji of the good he's done so far and reminds him of the contact he will be losing if he gets back on the train. Just then, the train bells ring, sounding an alarm for Shinji. The ringing of the bell is symbolic for his realization that he doesn't want to be alone anymore. The sound of the train kicks back in, this time contrasted with the sound of an engine roaring. The train, which represents Shinji's cycle of loneliness, takes off, but is, at times, overpowered by the sound of Misato's engine. Importantly, Misato's engine is how we are introduced to her in the first episode. Before we ever see her, we are introduced to the roaring of her engine. So even without the visuals, we know she is racing to catch back up with Shinji. The train drives away, leaving Misato feeling like she failed. Her breathing is loud and overpowers the cicadas, which continue to chirp in the background. In this moment, we are left with her and experience her guilt just like she does. Similarly, Shinji's gasp as he realizes that Misato has come back for him after he's chosen not to board the train overpowers the cicadas. We are left with him in this moment of reassurance that he is home with Misato. We are then treated to 49 seconds of nothing. There are no visuals. We are left with a nearly still image and the story is told entirely through the sound design. This feels like an impossibly long time to watch a still image, but in that time, the soundscape takes on a whole new form. Music kicks in and voices are heard in the distance, making things feel friendlier. Softer announcer voices echo over the speakers as cars pass in the background. The world is full and friendly again. All types of sound are heard in this moment as the world finally feels right again. The world feels alive again. Shinji's isolation has been lifted and he has been returned to reality. The final dialogue exchange between Shinji and Misato reaffirmed their connection and let us know that, for now, Shinji no longer feels alone. 
Tanaka approaches the subject of loneliness in an interesting way. Rather than use the absence of sound to make Shinji feel alone, Tanaka uses the absence of certain sounds to isolate him from the world around him. After building up how threatening the world is through sound alone, Tanaka is able to isolate key sounds that make Shinji feel much more trapped with just himself. He can't hear the world around him for what it really is. All he can hear is the constant pressure that's been placed on him. Much like how Shinji restarts his music after every time it finishes playing, Shinji is trapped in a cycle of loneliness that is only broken when he's reminded of how comforting reassurance sounds. In the end, Shinji finally realizes that in order to escape his loneliness, he needs to stop running away from contact. He must open up and force himself out of isolation. In the end, the world's soundscape is returned to normal as Shinji is able to escape the repetitive sounds which had trapped him. And in the end, Shinji is freed. And so are we. In the grand scheme of things for Evangelion, I should add a for now. Well, that'll do it for this one, guys. Thanks for sitting through one of my finals. I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun doing it. I really liked doing stuff like this. I enjoy doing video essays and I have fun breaking stuff like this down. So I hope it wasn't boring. And there you go. Another Evangelion video for you guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.